In this video, guys, we're going to look at the put back spread options spread trading strategy. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a warm welcome to you. Okay, so the put back spread is when you are bearish on a specific stock and you want unlimited profit potential, only cap by if the stock went to zero. But you also want to cap your risk, your limited risk. So one of the features of the put back spread is you've got unlimited profit. Of course, if it goes to zero, it can't go below zero, so there is some limit on it. But depending on, obviously, the price of the stock you're trading, that could be an awful lot and almost unlimited. And you want limited risk. So uh, this is the trade you would take. Now, this is an odd shaped graph. This is the sort of thing that you say to yourself, okay, well, I think this stock is gonna move dramatically one way or the other. I also think it's more likely to move dramatically to the downside, but there is a possibility that it still moves dramatically to the upside. But I wanna place all my chips on the fact that it's going to the downside, but I still don't wanna lose any money if it does move dramatically to the upside. My loss only should come if it stays exactly where it is. So I don't think it's gonna do that. So that could be your thesis. There's a load of reasons why that you might think that perhaps earnings, perhaps some sort of binary event, perhaps it's a market uh, that you think is going to uh, fall through the floor. You don't want to make any money if it carries on pushing up. You don't think it's going to stay where it is. It's either going to carry on plodding up uh, or it's going to crash. It's not going to stay where it is. That might be your thesis. So this would be the perfect trade for you to do to express that, to make money from that uh, idea. So how would you do it? First of all, you sell one in the money put and you buy two out of the money put. So this is an example. Let's see how the payoff would work at expiry. So we have our XYZ is currently trading at 48 bucks and we want to be paid off if it goes below 40. We think it's going to really tank this thing over whatever expiry, maybe doesn't matter if it's a week, if it's a month, if it's a year, whatever. Uh, at expiry, we expect this to be significantly low. So we want to position for that. So what we do is we sell our $50 put for $400. Um, that happens to be $2 in the money right? Because it's got some intrinsic value. You've got the right to sell something at 50 that's currently trading at $48, $2, multiplied by 100 shares, because one contract is 100 shares. And then there's some uh, premium on that as well. So that's $400. But we're selling it. So we're receiving the $400. The buyer is buying the right, but not the obligation to sell XYZ at $50 at the specific expiry we specify between us. That's great. $400 for that. But we take that $400 and we buy two 45 puts. Now, the 45 puts are out of the money, so they're gonna be much cheaper. And we buy two of those, and we spend $200 each on those for $400. So the net cost to us is zero. We see 400 paid out 200 times two, 400, the net is zero for the deal. Okay, so what happens if for various scenarios that expire? So let's imagine we expire at $45. What's gonna to happen to the value of the 50 put? Well, the 50 put is worth 500 bucks, right? Because um, we are down by five dollars because we've got the right to sell something at 50 it's currently trading 45 500 dollars worth of value on that the 45 put is worthless so how does that fare for what we've paid out so unfortunately we haven't actually received any credit here because the 50 dollar put cost us for oh sorry we received 400 for that we have to pay out 500 that's okay so we've lost 100 on that but unfortunately we've lost the full 400 on those two so our net loss is minus $500 and that you can see on this chart that's our peak loss so let's prove it by doing some more maths on it let's have a look at the 50 and the 40 look at the 50 first so it goes to 50 this time pushes up uh, what happens to the trade? Well, the 50 put becomes worthless because the right to sell something at 50 is a 50 is no value. What about the 45 put? Well, again, uh, you know, that trades and that's not worth anything. Um, we've, uh, you know, lost our 400, sorry, lost our 400 on this bond of buying the puts here. We gained our 400, our net is zero. So you can see if it goes to 50, our net is going to be zero. And you can see that on the chart. What about the 40? Well, the same thing happens because of the way they position this. The 50 put has got some value. Of course it has, because it's got $10 worth of value times by our 100, a thousand bucks worth of value. The 45 puts that we've bought, have they got any value? Well, they do as well, because we've got two of those, they're worth 500 times the two. Okay, I'm just doing an individual one. Don't forget, we've got two of those. So what does that give us? That gives us a net of zero, because we've lost a thousand on that 50 put uh, that we happened to sell 
because we have to give out $1,000 for it, but we've made two lots of 545 puts that we bought, so our net is zero. So you can see now 40 is zero, 50 is zero, 45 is our max loss. So, you know, that's, that's that part of the graph done. What happens if we start to see the stock going right down, just as we predicted, it goes to something like $30. How does that work out for us? Okay, well, the 50 put has got $20 worth of value, so it's 2,000 worth of of value on that one. Oh, uh, that's not gr so great because we sold that, but hey, this is the good stuff now. We bought these 45 puts, it's gone to 30. How much value have that got? Has those got? Well, you've got the right to buy something at 30, it's a 45, $15 worth of value, times by your 100. What does that give you? It gives you 1500 bucks. But don't forget, we've got two of those. I'm going to put that very small in brackets. What does that do for us? Well, we didn't pay anything for the deal, so we can just look at this raw numbers. Uh, we are down 2,000 because we're selling that put. So we're down 2,000, but we're up 3,000. So what happens is we are up a thousand pounds or thousand dollars, should I say, sorry, on the deal. And you can see how, as we start to go down even further, that's gonna go even further. Let's have a look at the 10 just to prove this. So let's say really tanks low. What's the 10 gonna be worth a 50 put? It's gonna be worth 4,000. And unfortunately we sold that one. So we're on the look, on the hook for that. But the 45 put has got some good value as well, right? That's got $35 worth of value, 3,500 times the two. Okay, so that's 7,000. 7,000, take away the 4,000, that gives a $3,000 profit. So you can see every $10 we move, we're making $1,000. So now it becomes a linear thing that as it goes down to zero, making a thousand bucks for each one. So don't forget, you know, our risk was only $500. We've got quite a decent upside here. If this thing really does go to zero, then potentially, you know, we are, are making a lot of money from this. Uh, the worst case scenario is it stays exactly where it is at expiry. That's exactly what we don't want to happen, but it's capped if it does. Uh, if it rips off the upside again, it's not the end of the world. We don't lose anything on that. But we really want it to fall to the floor. And that's why we've structured this the way it is by selling one in the money put, buying two out of the money puts, giving us this decent kind of skewed risk reward for something that we're bearish on. All right, guys, see you next one. Take care. Bye-bye.